assume a good fellow. What day is today? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day, of course. Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. From the screen to Spirit. the stage. The transformation of Ebenezer Scrooge from miser to cheerful giver strikes a chord in the hearts of adults and children. There goes Mr. Humbug, there goes Mr. Grimm. If they gave a prize for being mean, the winner would be him. All these versions are the result of Charles Dickens' classic novel, A Christmas Carol. The legendary 19th century English writer loved the holiday. He was even quoted as saying, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. Scholar and author Dr. Gary College has studied Dickens extensively. The Akron, Ohio native even studied in the UK, earning a PhD at the prestigious University of St. Andrews for his work on the faith of Dickens. That's what's gonna be prevalent in in anything we read by Dickens, that idea that real Christianity, and Dickens uses that, that term real Christianity a number of times in letters and, and in his, his writing, uh, real Christianity is, is being like Jesus. During his research, College discovered that Dickens was a Christian and his faith in Jesus Christ surfaces throughout his works in the themes and characters. He read a letter for us from Dickens to one of his critics. All my strongest illustrations are derived from the New Testament. All my social abuses are shown as departures from its spirit. All my good people are humble, charitable, faithful, forgiving, over and over again. I claim them in express words as disciples of the founder of our religion. For example, in A Christmas Carol, College says Marley's warning to Scrooge about what it means to truly live life reflects the importance of imitating Christ. The taking care of humanity, the, the thinking about my fellow man, uh, doing unto others as I'd have them do unto me. Uh, for Dickens, uh, the golden rule was, was absolutely crucial. College believes the most definitive evidence for the Christian faith of Charles Dickens is this little known work written during the height of his career over a period of three years for his children. It's simply titled, The Life of Our Lord. Critics are right, it's not a fantastic piece of literature, but it is, uh, uh, it just, it shines a bright light on Dickens' faith because he is the sole editor of this thing. College calls the life of our Lord a gospel harmony, where the author interweaves the four gospels into a single narrative. In this case, Dickens summarized the life of Christ for the next generation, his children. My dear children, I'm very anxious that you should know something about the history of Jesus Christ, for everybody ought to know about him. Gospel harmonies were very important in the 19th century. A Christian family at that time would have had at least two books in their home, the Bible and a gospel harmony. The spiritual formation of his children is, is nothing that Dickens would leave to someone else. He just wouldn't have done that. So this would have been a very important tool in the Dickens family. Uh, for religious instruction, for instruction in, in, in Christian thinking. College says very few people know about this part of Dickens' work or his Christian faith. Literary critics dismissed his religion as unimportant and superficial, and educators followed suit. Even College found himself criticized when presenting his dissertation at St. Andrews. That I would be so audacious as to suggest that this icon of, of British literature uh, was somehow a man of faith. Um, I don't know how to explain that hostility other than um, people like darkness better than light. Over the years, it hasn't always been negative. A handful of literary scholars have discussed the faith of Dickens. To shine the light much brighter on the Christian beliefs of one of the greatest writers in history, College says he believes God wanted him to write this book. It's entitled, God and Charles Dickens, Recovering the Christian Voice of a Classic Author, a book released this year, which is the 200th anniversary of Dickens' birth. All of that was providential and guided by our Lord. Um, it, was, it was actually rather easy to get a publisher. That's not, that's not always true. It's just a good feeling to when you, when you know the Spirit of God is involved and, and, and this is not your project. He dedicates the book to his grandchildren, writing, May you each find joy as did Dickens in Our Savior.
Mark Martin, CBN News, Akron, Ohio.